Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. I am going to talk about the Waldorf Iridium and talk about ring modulation, which um, to be honest, ring modulation to me, it's something I knew about, but also uh, I never really used it much. It was okay. I mean, it's, 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 I, I'm going to explain it, but I also, but then I'm going to show you something I found on the Iridium that really opened up a really cool way to do synthesis. And so I wanted to, to show that, and that's what this video is about. But let's start with a little bit about what is ring modulation. So it's an effect. So one thing that I've done to show this is I've gone into kernels mode. So on oscillator one, I went into kernel. And basically, one quick thing I found that was cool that I didn't know about was in kernel mode, when you set what type of pitch mode you want, like ratio, etc. Fixed is one of the options, which is really nice because there's a lot of synthesizers where you can't just set a specific hertz that you want for just to experiment around, you know, with audio and make drones and all sorts of stuff. So anyway, this one I've set to 300 hertz, and then I have another fixed value for the second uh, kernel, which is a thousand hertz. So we're putting both of those into ring modulator, into a ring modulator. And the thing is, just so you know, there's not a carrier and a modulator for ring modulation. It's just it combines two waves. And so what you end up with is it takes the uh, both waves and it adds them. So it's the sum of both of their hertz. So we'll have one uh, in the pitch domain, we'll have 1300 hertz, and then it does the difference or the delta, so it's going to be 700 hertz. And if I go into global for a second and look at the analyzer here, you'll see we'll have two pitches, and notice that none of them are actually at one kilohertz, which is a thousand hertz, which is what one of the values was. So it offsets uh, the sum and the difference, so you can kind of get these really strange tones out of it, which is which is cool. I mean, it actually is an interesting effect. Let's look at the uh, scope here. And one thing that's cool, um, this is also something I was really unaware of, the scope, uh, if you have it on pitch, you'll see it's live and it's moving. This one-shot mode is awesome because it just takes, like it says, it's like a picture. And now what's cool is if I come away from this or whatever and I want to go back and look at that, it kind of keeps that, which is really nice. So it just makes it really easy to really look at waveforms. So to, um, I want to change a little bit of the values so we can get them to spread out just a little bit more. So I'm going to slow down the wave. Let's go down to 100 hertz. And let's look at what that looks like. Okay, well, yeah, we're definitely starting to see that. And let me speed up the other one so that we get, let's do 2,000 hertz. Just we'll double that just to get a little more. I'm just trying to make that picture right there. Um, all right, so what you're seeing is you're seeing the results of, it's, it looks like amplitude modulation, to be honest. I mean, because the volume is changing at 100 hertz, right? It's going up and down 100 hertz. And then the other one is just playing through, right? So that's what you're seeing uh, from the higher frequency uh, sine wave. And you, this would be the same as just putting an LFO onto changing the volume uh, of an oscillator, you know, at 100 hertz, right? That's what it would look like. Um, so that's what amplitude modulation, excuse me, that's what uh, ring modulation does. But there's a subtle thing here, I think, that's going to show up in these experiments uh, a little bit later, is that right here where the wave goes below zero, when it crosses zero, in amplitude modulation, that usually takes out the wave or it leaves it blank because it's at zero. You know, there's not negative um, negative volume, right? So it just it zeroes out, blanks out that area. What ring modulation does, it actually flips the phase. So it's a little hard to see in this image, but there's this little cusp there where that's mirroring over. So now let's compare this to uh, amplitude modulation. So let me just jump out of this for a second. And let's just flip this K2 mod over to amplitude modulation. And then we'll go in and look at this waveform. And you'll see this, you know, a, a kind of a different picture, but also those are the same input frequencies. And you can hear 
has a very different result. Notice this kind of flat spot here that I was talking about. And also there's just a bit more uh, coverage on how it's applying. So let's go to um, the frequencies. And now, even though you can't see that, there's three values. So let me spread these out. So I'm gonna go back to um, the first guy, the, fir uh, the first kernel, he's at 100 Hertz, excuse me. And let's go to like, yeah, 800. So now we're getting this tone, which, so now you're seeing three values. Now, th what's interesting about this is amplitude modulation actually is just, uh, it's symmetrical. So what it does is it takes the carrier frequency. So in this case, uh, the carrier in this case, I think is the, um, I'm actually the carrier, I believe, Sometimes I get, sorry, I apologize. Sometimes I get the carrier and the modulator mixed up, but because they, they flip. Um, what I'm saying is that K2 is the carrier and K1 is the modulator in this case. So the frequency of K2 is 2000 hertz. So what's going to happen with amplitude modulation is it's actually going to play that. Now with ring modulation, it actually, you won't hear it. It actually takes both signals out and then does that offset splitting. So here we have 2000 hertz, which we were seeing, and then what it will do is it's going to take uh, 800 and it's going to be offset 800 both directions. So you're going to have 2800 one way and then 1200 the other way. And that's what we're seeing in this um, frequency. So let me... Yep, yeah. so... Um... I was just look, sorry, I paused for a second because I was looking at the one kilohertz and that's labeling the one to the left. So 2000 is right there. So it is exactly right. I just thought, wait a minute, it didn't quite look right. All right. So now what do we do with this? So what? Uh, maybe you've heard all these things before through other videos and thought, okay, what do I use this for? It's a cool effect. You can use it for drones and things like that. But check this out. This is the thing that, that really got my attention. So what I was doing was I was testing uh, the beta firmware for the Iridium. And by the way, if you want to test it and you have an Iridium, uh, you can just contact Waldorf Support and they'll get you set up so you can uh, get the betas. The betas, in my opinion, for the Iridium have been uh, very stable and, and easy to, to work with. I mean, obviously back up everything before you uh, jump into it, but um, I've had a lot of success just you know using it uh, in between after I back stuff up. But anyway, uh, let's go and start with a sine wave. So what I was doing was I was doing some testing and I wanted to mess with something I've never really tried much. When you go into routing, there's this ring modulation one to two and one to three. In other words, you can combine one and two and one and three uh, and put both of them through a ring modulator. And this has the, the mix for that. So what I did was I cranked this up all the way. And I thought, okay, I'll just crank those up. And uh, the first thing I found, let me set this to sine wave. And yeah, let's just do those two for now. I'll leave oscillator three off. Okay, the first thing was I, I didn't really hear much. So I was like, okay. Now, ring modulation has this weird thing where if you if it's the same frequency then one of them it cancels out so in other words if it's the same note if you think about like a thousand hertz it's going to do two thousand hertz right and it's going to cancel out the note that comes through and then there's not much else happening so it's when it goes a thousand minus a thousand that's zero so when you give it the same note it doesn't do much so what i did was i thought okay well i'll move this up an octave so i moved this up to and then I started hearing more, and I was like, okay, that's cool. Um, I remember just trying to retrace my steps here. I added a little bit of layer gain, you know, just to get some volume. And then what I did was I was like, wait a minute, something's weird. So I turned off the volume on oscillator 2, and I was like, wait a minute. Oscillator 2 volume is off. Why am I getting volume? And I thought, oh, because it's... And I turned off oscillator 1. And I was still hearing both a little bit of both and i was like wait a minute this is strange so then i went in and said okay well let me add another um 
I'm gonna add this sine wave in, okay? And then I was getting the volumes. I had both, so I have oscillator one, two, and three are off, and I'm getting output. And it's really because of these guys are all the way up. So I thought, oh, well, let me explore this a little bit and try things out. One of the knobs that I touched that was cool was sync. So by chopping the input wave, I started to get these interesting tones. And I thought, okay, that actually sounds kind of cool. So I thought, okay, let me... Yeah, it's interesting, those are sine waves, but you know, I'm getting some, some harmonics and stuff. So I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. So I added some um, release. Well, a lot of release, actually. And then I added uh, some attack. All right, and then I started kind of doing some chords and stuff. And I started to like the tone. I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. And then I had a moment where I touched the uh, kernels knob to add more count into the waveform. And check this out. So I'm gonna, this is one note, right? And these are sine waves. One of them has sync, that's it. That's all we're doing. Add some kernels in. If you have headphones on, or if you have a stereo set up, you hear what just happened. So now, let me go, go into global. There we go. So now you're seeing what's happening is we are getting these stereo phasing sort of effects. And I love it. I was like messing with this and I just thought this is an awesome tool. And so I started exploring this more and I wanna invite everybody out there to, to do the same. Uh, and, and the reason why is simple, uh, because there's so many different combinations you can do. E each oscillator on the um, Iridium is crazy powerful. And th I've just been discovering so many different tones and things just by combining waveforms and doing stuff. So wait, anyway, let me show you, you know, so if you're just sitting there going, well, whatever, let me show you what I made. Uh, and this was this was just a quick thing. This was something I just did. Okay, so so I made this. So I'm gonna play. I'm not gonna talk over this. I'm just gonna play so you can listen to it. I added uh, reverb, and on the Digiformer, uh, digital former, I have just a touch of um, uh, drive on this. So so check this out. So I was trying not to talk over that. Um, why is this such a, you know, why is this thing got me so excited? Well, because doing those types of sounds that have this um, organic motion in them takes a lot of time to really set up. I mean, you end up with a lot of LFOs and a lot of different uh, randomization um, of, of, of the trigs and bipolar versus unipolar and you and you map all this stuff for, for me this was like 
you go in and pick this and just start messing with different wave combinations and you can just it's just a whole world of stuff that i started exploring i was like wow this is really awesome i want to make a video about it so that's why i'm here so let me break this down a little bit so oscillator one in this uh is just a sine wave and you can see i have a little bit of sync on there because i liked how that added a lot of uh, variance uh four kernels oscillator two one kernel uh just a square wave a little bit of warp on there. That's it, pretty much straight up. Uh, oscillator 3 is a uh, sawtooth. And this one, again, just pretty much straight up. Not even any warp, not even any. So I just picked those. Um, I added some reverb onto this guy. And uh, quick shout out to the effects on the Iridium. Another sort of <laughs> underrated thing. I think the effects on the Iridium are incredible. Uh, and just so you know... Um, don't want to get too off track here, but if you do test the beta, one thing that's really nice is uh, there's now effects routing. Uh, so when you are placing your five effects, you can put them on different lanes and there's different combinations. I'm just picking a couple of them here to give you an idea. Uh, but you can then make it so you can have, uh, you know, reverb that has a dedicated lane and then something else. You might have a delay that goes into a flanger and, you know, all sorts of combinations. So it's been really cool uh, messing around with that. But anyway, for this, I just used straight up reverb and the reverb is really good on the Iridium. Um, so uh, just to finish the, we went through oscillator one, two, and three. Um, I did use some filtering. So I used uh, two different filters um, and they're pretty much, I mean, they're, they're key tracked. So there's not a lot of motion on them. I just used them to shape um, and then, uh, oh, and then the drive. Yeah. So I just basically added some drive, um, in here with the, uh, PNP model. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to stop there. Um, if you have an Iridium, the only thing that you need to do is pretty simple. Uh, you hit the routing button, crank these guys up to 1.0 on each, uh, mess around with different combinations of oscillators. Turn your oscillator mix all the way off. So turn your volumes all the way down and just turn those up and then play around with it and see what you discover. Because for me, this was like another sort of gem inside of the gem <laughs> of the Iridium, which is really fun. So anyway, I hope uh, this was interesting for you and uh, take it easy. Thanks a lot. Bye.